The king of color accurate gaming laptops for creative professionals, the Gigabyte Aero 17 HDR. I have taken this laptop through 14 benchmark tests to create the ultimate creative focused review. We're going to look at 3D modeling, motion design, video and photo editing, graphic design, and more. Let's get rocking! <laughs> If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're going to find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. If you're curious about the exact availability or pricing of this laptop, you can head down in the description below and click that link. Now, if you do make a purchase through that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. As I pulled this laptop out of the box for the first time, I was pleased to see the same finely tuned build quality of the Gigabyte Arrow I remembered at CES earlier this year. It is built with a CNC aluminum chassis, which has great strength to weight ratio, excellent durability, and natural corrosion resistance. Just in case you planned on taking this laptop on a deep sea exploration, you'll destroy the components, but the chassis will be in excellent condition. So yeah, the top cover, bottom cover, and keyboard deck are all covered in this CNC aluminum. However, the side panels and back panel where the rear vent is placed are plastic. Um, this is a really solid laptop in my hands. It is surprisingly thin and light for a 17-inch gaming laptop, especially in comparison to something like the Asus Rogue Strix G17, which I have made a complete head-to-head -head review with the Gigabyte. If you're interested in checking out that video, it is in the YouTube cards above check that out after this video is finished, of course. The matte finish on the keyboard deck, top cover, and bottom cover show minimal fingerprints, which is really nice. Smudges drive me crazy, and I know a lot of you feel the same way. Weighing in at 5.51 pounds and at a thickness of 0.84 inches thick, it is one of the more on-the-go friendly laptops in the 17-inch category. Just make sure to pick up a backpack that is capable of fitting a 17-inch laptop. For comparison, the new Dell XPS 17 weighs the exact same weight and is only 0.0 four inches thinner at 0 0.8 versus 0 0.84 of the Gigabyte Aero. The 94.24 watt hour battery should give you roughly six and a half to seven hours of web browsing battery life and about four to five hours of design and video editing battery life. The port selection on the Gigabyte Aero 17 is generous. One thing that I'm really psyched about on this laptop is the SD card slot. So as far as creators are concerned with that SD card slot, the Gigabyte Aero and the HP Omen are the only laptops I've reviewed this year with a full SD card slot. I said this earlier this year when reviewing the 15 inch model, if I were going to fork out my own money today and buy a laptop, I'd pick up the Aero series. It has so many features and specifications that check all the boxes of a creative professional and at a great price. But before I get ahead of myself, we will have to see how well this laptop handles the benchmark tests coming up here in just a minute. As I open the lid of the Gigabyte Aero, which is an all aluminum top cover, I am greeted by an all aluminum keyboard deck, plus a ultra HD 4K 17.3 inch display with a refresh rate of 60 Hertz. The hinges are secure and lend to nearly zero screen flex at the center of the screen. This laptop can reach 531 nits at full brightness and has a Pantone verified color gamut range of 100% sRGB, 100% Adobe RGB and 89% DCI P3, all at an average Delta E of 0.48. Like I said, this laptop is stacked with features and capabilities. With a big screen and fairly thin and light chassis for a 17 inch laptop that is, this laptop is a mobile creator beast. Moving down to the aluminum keyboard deck, Gigabyte has placed a spacious full-size keyboard on the arrow with a numpad. The keyboard is very quiet, and honestly, quiet nearly doesn't even explain well. I think nearly silent is a more accurate assessment. The keys feature my favorite soft touch material on the top of the caps, and they are backlit very well, with only the slightest bit of light leak at the edges of the keys. One thing I don't like about the keyboard is how hard it is to see the function keys in the dark. Because the keyboard lighting does not shine through the function indication on the key, it is very difficult to see in the dark. To turn on and off the keyboard lighting, all you need to do is hold the function key and hit the space bar. So that's nice. I'm not like searching around for how to like turn up the brightness or turn down the brightness, but it is still kind of difficult to see the other function keys that I may want to use. You can also easily set up the RGB lighting by jumping into the Gigabyte Control Center. There are a number of pre-programmed RGB styles that are pretty neat. 
The trackpad is also quiet. It has a dampened click sound, which for classrooms and quiet office settings will lend well to not disturbing others around you. The click is firm and the touch gestures on point. It has a slight matte finish, but not to the level of the HP Omen, which I was fanboying about in a recent review. In comparison, it is also a great trackpad for creators, but I still like that Omen trackpad slightly more to the touch, but I will say that this trackpad is quieter. Okay, I'll pause on geeking out so you can listen to me typing on the keyboard and using the trackpad. This laptop does come with a 720p webcam along the front edge of the keyboard deck. This has allowed for thinner bezels on the screen, but it will be a poor experience for people looking at you as it is the classic staring up your nose position for a webcam. Although one thing I do like about it is the manual slider allowing you to close off the viewport as to avoid cyber spies. This laptop has excellent ventilation on the keyboard deck, behind the keyboard deck, a massive vent on the bottom cover, and both side panels. These vents are able to cool this laptop very well during the test coming up in just a minute. But since we are talking about it, I'll show you the thermal results of this laptop right now. If you're enjoying this video and getting some value gently, ever so gently, press down on that like button and let me know in the comment section how you plan on using this laptop. If you want more content like this in the future, then make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. All right, let's get back into it. Now, before we get into the performance specs, I want to talk about Gigabyte's AI capabilities. Gigabyte has partnered with the Microsoft Azure Cloud to collect data on apps you are using in order for the computer to automatically optimize components so that you get the most performance out of this laptop. Now, this is an optional benefit. You do not have to allow your computer to share information with the Azure Cloud, but it does come with the large benefit of getting more performance out of your laptop. The thought is that different users users will use different apps and the laptop can tailor the component interaction in those apps to get the most out of them. So if you need more CPU or you need, you know, more power dedicated towards the GPU, whatever it might be, the Azure Cloud is helping you with those choices and giving you better performance. The Gigabyte Arrow I'm reviewing comes with the Intel Core i7-10875H with 8 cores and 16 threads, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Super Max Q, 16 gigs of RAM, and 512 gigs of solid state drive. Let's take a second before we get into the benchmark results to see how well the components were utilized during the tests. Let's start things off with the Photoshop benchmark. I use this Photoshop benchmark to see how well a laptop can handle the most intense tool in Adobe's design suite. If a laptop can perform well in Photoshop, it will handle InDesign and Illustrator with ease. In the benchmark, the Gigabyte Arrow is sitting at almost the top of the test result charts, coming out with a 788 on the benchmark score. Definitely a strong contender if you're looking for a Photoshop laptop. You can also use this reference if you are considering other design or photography focused software, such as Affinity Photo, Sketch, and Figma. Now that we know this laptop can handle the Adobe Design Suite, let's check out how well it can handle motion design inside of After Effects. As you can see, the Gigabyte Arrow is pulling off an 806 in After Effects Puget Systems benchmark test. And for the After Effects render test, it is snagging a score of 652, grabbing third place on my charts. In Geekbench, single core and multi core, the Gigabyte Arrow handled itself well, attaining a 1314 on the single core benchmark, placing it in the mid range of my test results. And for the multi core score, it was able to pull off a 6972, which places it at the top five results along with the 9980HK and the top Ryzen processors. Moving into 3D modeling benchmarks, let's take a look at the Cinebench R20. Once again, the Gigabyte Arrow is on the upper end of the charts with a score of 3283. As requested, here are the 3D modeling benchmarks, and if you have any more requests for 3D modeling tests you want me to run, please let me know and I am happy to include them in future reviews if possible. 
In Autodesk 3ds Max, the Gigabyte Aero 17 scored a 168.82. In Autodesk Maya, a 213.75. In PTC Creo, a 168.88 and in SOLIDWORKS in 8684. And for the Blender Classroom benchmark, the Gigabyte Aero was able to complete that test using the GPU in three minutes and 26 seconds. Now onto my favorite portion of the benchmark test, video editing in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. First, I'm going to start off with a playback test. For this test, I'm going to use a nine minute 4K clip adding some motion graphics, and then playing it back in the timeline at full quality. This clip contains 16,177 frames in total, with 7,240 of those frames being motion graphics. During this test, the Gigabyte Aero 17 saw dropped frame rates as follows. Full quality, four frames dropped. At half quality, zero frames dropped. And at fourth quality, zero frames dropped. I was running this test with only Premiere Pro open. So I will say, if you start multitasking on your laptop while editing, you may experience more drop frames at full quality, but you can easily drop it down to half or fourth quality to keep your editing experience smooth. To render out the 7,240 frames of motion design in that project, it took two minutes and 43 seconds, which is a great time for this laptop. Moving on to the 4K export test, I'm going to take a 9 minute 4K clip, place it into Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve using the free version of DaVinci Resolve, then export both out at 1080p and 4K YouTube settings. Premiere Pro 4K to 4K took the Gigabyte Arrow 2 minutes and 57 seconds. The 4K to 1080p took 3 minutes and 22 seconds. For DaVinci Resolve 4K to 4K, it took 8 minutes and 27 seconds. And DaVinci Resolve 4K to 1080p, 5 minutes and 3 seconds. Earlier, we took a look at the thermals and component usage of this laptop, but no review would be complete without checking into the noise that this laptop produces while running these programs and benchmarks. At idle, you're seeing about 35 to 40 decibels, while web browsing, around 45 decibels, but if you switch it to quiet mode, you get a little bit less noise. For Premiere Pro, 4K to 4K export, you saw about 56 decibels. Inside of Photoshop, 54 decibels. And the DaVinci Resolve 4K to 4K export, we saw 56 decibels. This laptop runs at an average fan decibel level for most gaming laptops. Do note that there is a slight coil whine from the cooling system depending on the frequency it is hitting while running the system. But it is not as whiny as the HP Omen, which had a far more noticeable coil whine. If you're looking for a creative professional powerhouse with a Pantone verified Adobe color gamut range of 100%, killer video editing export times, and playback in the timeline, 3D modeling scores that crush the competition, a quiet keyboard and trackpad, thin and light chassis for a 17 inch laptop, while also featuring a built-in SD card slot, can I get an amen? Then you must consider the Gigabyte Aero 17XB. If you're curious about the exact availability or pricing of this laptop, you can head down in the description below and click that link. And of course, if you do use that, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. If you want to watch more videos about the Gigabyte Aero 17, click or tap the screen over here. Otherwise, keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here in the next video.